We are blessed as a church to have uh, some great musicians and great, our great praise team. Aren't, don't you agree? Give the Lord praise offering for them this morning. Amen. <laughs> grateful for them. Grateful that they put up with me for today. I promise it won't happen often. But it's great to be in God's house and be able to come into his presence both with song and praise and prayers and to be able to come and to look into his word and allow him to speak to our hearts. So I want to invite you to take your Bible once again and find the gospel of Mark in the New Testament as we're preaching through and looking through the gospel of Mark and the totality of what Jesus did and the interruptions in life. Jesus lived in and for the interruptions and as he walked through every day he had people thronging around him asking him pleading with him begging him uh, uh, praising him on one hand but then criticizing him on the other and as uh, our Christ our son of the living God was teaching his disciples he showed them not only in word but in deed in action and in servanthood what it means to follow the Heavenly Father and be faithful to His will. So this morning we're going to look at a scripture passage in the third chapter of the Gospel of Mark and looking at verses 7 through 12 and we're going to read verses 7 and 8 together that you see up on the screens behind me. These verses lead us to see the multitudes of people that thronged around and spoke to and demanded things from Jesus. What can we learn from this passage? I think we can learn that we're not called to be just fair weather followers, but we're called to be people who are committed, submissive, and surrendered to what God has called us to do and to be. Amen? Amen. So we're going to read these two verses, verses 7 and 8 of chapter 3. And I want to invite you, if you're able, to again stand with me and let's respect God's word. And let's say these two verses together in unison that you see behind me on the screens. Let's say it together. But Jesus withdrew with his disciples to the sea. And a great multitude from Galilee followed him and from Judea and Jerusalem and Idumea and beyond the Jordan. And those from Tyre and Sidon, a great multitude, when they heard how many things he was doing, came to him. Let's pray. Father, help us slow down a minute. Just slow down our thoughts, our heart, our bodies, our spirit, and come into your presence. We want to be in the heart of worship today, Lord. And to be in the heart of worship means that we want to be still and know that you are God. We want to experience your presence as you teach us, as you lead us, as you guide us today, preparing us not only for today but for tomorrow and the rest of this week and all that you have in store for us, open up our spirit that we might truly hear. And Father, I pray that words go beyond human beings and the mighty word of God from the Bible speaks to us today. Help us here with all that's within us and be ready to follow you and respond in faith. We thank you for what you're going to do and we pray all this believing in the powerful and perfect name of our Savior, the Lord Jesus, and all God's church said, amen. Please be seated. Back in the time of the Civil War, toward the beginning, when in 1860, there in 1860 to 61, there were uh, all kinds of things happening uh, in this country, division, despair, uh, worry, fret, and it all culminated in the beginning of hostilities between the northern states and the southern states. And one of the things that happened that seems so peculiar to us today is that the elite from Washington, D.C. and surrounding areas in Virginia decided to go out and watch a Civil War battle take place. 
They took their picnic lunches out there with them. There's a picture of them that you're going to see up on the screen. They, they, they took their picnic lunches with them and went out on the side of the hillside to watch the hostilities. Now think about that for a minute. These folks decided that they were going to be spectators to the Battle of Bull Run out right in front of them in a valley. And you think about how morbid is that? But yet, today in our culture, things often don't change. We stop to look at traffic accidents like we're voyeurs looking in at what's going on on the highway and We ought to be praying for those people no matter what's happened. We ought to be praying for each other and we ought to be praying for sense that we want to be about the will of God in all that we do. Amen? These spectators are an example of what we can become in the Christian life sometimes. We can become spectators to the church, spectators to what's happening in the culture, spectators to the world. We're fair-weather followers sometimes, and that's those folks that uh, they are great uh, friends when things are going well. When you got money and influence and power, boy, you got all kinds of friends, don't you? We think about in Luke 15, the prodigal son took all of his inheritance from his father, and he went out, and it says he spent it on riotous living. And he had lots and lots and lots of friends until what? The money ran out. And then they faded into the background and he found himself living in a pig pen. Think about it, folks, as we come into God's presence this morning. We're called to be those people that refuse to be fair weather followers. We are the followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior of all the world, the Son of God, and the one who will welcome us into his presence one day. So what do we do between then and now? Well, we do what Jesus teaches and what he models in front of us. We read part of the scripture a moment ago. It says Jesus withdrew to the edge of the sea. And why? Because he had all these people coming to follow him. Now, they were coming from everywhere. He put that map up on the screen for me, that next slide. You see this map? It shows you Galilee and Samaria and Judea and Perea and the Decapolis and uh, Adamea there on the bottom. Let me tell you, all of these places named here, these folks were flocking to follow Jesus. And they were coming to him around Galilee, around the sea, And why do you think they were coming? Well, the Bible tells us why. Uh, The Bible says they were coming because they they heard, you know, we hear stuff. They heard how many things he was doing and they came to him. And what were they doing? He told his disciples that a small boat should be kept ready for him because of the multitude, lest they should crush him. Not for him to escape, but for him to push back off the shore so he could teach them all. Verse 10, For he healed many, so that as many as had afflictions pressed about him to touch him. They just wanted to touch him. And clean spirits, wherever, whenever they saw him, they fell down before him and cried out, saying, You are the Son of God. But Jesus sternly warned them that they should not make him known. What do we learn from that passage? We learn that people come out and they respond. They hear of things happening. When they hear of healings that are going on, when they they hear of good things and blessings coming, they show up. And the crowds came from all around. Not just from one locality, but they came from all of those areas flocking to the sea right up there between Galilee and the Decapolis there. They were flocking to the edge of the sea to see this teacher, Jesus. And they came, and they came with uh, all of their motives, all of their wants, all of their desires, all of their things, that they, uh, the, the, the spectacle they thought they might see. 
And they showed up. And as they showed up, Jesus, as he always does, never turns them away, does he? He always welcomes them in. He welcomed us in. Amen? He welcomed us into his presence. He welcomed us by his spirit. And he welcomes us to reach out and touch him. And he let these throngs come. And, and he ministered to them. And he healed them. And, he, and they touched him. And he cast out demons from them. And he was faithful to show us that if we're going to be a follower, a real follower, of the Lord Jesus Christ, then that means we're going to reach out too. We're going to reach out to care. We're going to reach out to show up. We're going to serve. We're going to love people with the everlasting love of God. And we're going to get past our wants and our desires and our selfishness. And we're going to move forward and let God use us to be a minister to someone else. And when we, we see what Jesus shows us how to do, it reminds us of things in our lives we don't want to be those fair weather followers we don't want to be the spectators that show up for the show we want to be the people that follow jesus first of all when it's inconvenient you know sometimes following jesus is inconvenient sometimes you might not feel as well as you think you ought to or sometimes you may be covered up with work in your vocation or you may be overwhelmed with something going on in school or you may be uh, covered up with all the worries and anxieties and things of life life just happens doesn't it but yet many times we'll use those things as excuses not to serve excuses just to show up do you know that I can tell you from now until Jesus comes to retrieve us, his church, and catch us away to be with him in the Father's house forever, we're going to experience some inconveniences. There's going to be challenges to our faith. There are already challenges to our belief in who we are. We're called bigots. We're called prejudice. We're called all kinds of names they've been calling believers for 2,000 years. But we have been spared in many, many ways in this wonderful country we live in. But no more. The persecution's coming. The persecution has already begun. And we as God's people have got to decide, are we going to be fair weather followers or are we going to accept the challenge as it comes and stand for Christ where we are and realize that we have been given a wonderful opportunity to be bold in our belief. We've been given a wonderful chance to stand up in this season of time and proclaim who we are. And it's going to be inconvenient. And sometimes it's going to be uncomfortable. And sometimes God's going to ask you to do something and you say, you're going to say, really, Lord? And he's going to remind you, I've never left you nor forsaken you. And I'll walk with you and empower you to do exactly what I ask you to do. But brothers and sisters, we can't be fair weather followers it's not enough to be a spectator of the gospel it is our calling to move forward and to be bold in our witness in second timothy chapter one uh, verses seven and eight we read these words for god has not given us a spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind now not me but some of you have a sound mind but with the power think about that and the love of God overshadow and overwhelm all of the problems in the world and challenges that come. He's not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound, my, my, uh, sound mind. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of his prisoner, Paul was talking about himself, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God. We need to share in the sufferings, but... We're not sharing alone. Christ is in us, right? The hope of glory. He's in all of us who are believers. And so we allow God to work through us and we stand honoring who he is and honoring his legacy in our life. One of the things that I, I love about Warner Robins is it's an a Air Force military town. And I, I love the fact that we have... Uh, folks that serve in our congregation and in our community and it's just my blessing I think to 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 be here during this time in this season one of the things I'm always impressed with as we get closer and closer to Memorial Day is we decorate the graves of the fallen whether we 
place flowers or flags or whatever we do, we want to honor the fallen. And we want to honor people who have served. And we want to honor one another because we live in the greatest country on God's earth that he ever created. And don't ever forget that. As, as ugly as our government can become and as messy as it can become at times, don't forget the fact we live in a great nation. And God inspired it all. And so as we honor the fallen on Memorial Day, when we, as we honor our military personnel who serve now, we want to be bold and say, I'm proud and I'm blessed to live in the United States of America, but I want to encourage you to go a step further. Be proud and blessed that you're a Christian believer. And that you can share your faith in freedom and openness in the world because there are house churches who are meeting in secret with one little light bulb uh, hanging in the center and the, the windows blacked out so nobody will know today. Because if they know, they'll be taken away, cast out of their villages, or worse, taken into prison. Think about it. We live... And worship, thank God in freedom every day. And we need to be those people who recognize our blessings and not live in a spirit of fear, but in the spirit of power and the love of God. Second thing, we can be as those committed and surrendered followers of Christ as we follow Jesus in the times we need healing. The Bible says in verse number 10 of uh, Mark 3 that he healed many. And again, they just wanted to reach out and touch him. And when they reached out and touched him, they were healed. Oftentimes, in our most desperate moments, in our everyday needs, we're trying to reach out to God, aren't we? We desperately need his spirit and his presence. Well, just think about it. As we need him physically and spiritually every day, we need a connection. We want that connection with our Lord. But we selfishly at times just only want that connection when we want it. God wants to walk with us all the time. Amen. He wants to minister to our spirit all the time. He wants to give us the joy of our salvation all the time, every day. He wants us to stay connected. Now you may have something like this picture of a router I'm going to show you up on the screen in your home. Or you may have uh, some other kind of uh, internet gateway that comes into your house. But almost everybody in this place has got some kind of device that sends a Wi-Fi signal into your house, don't you? Almost all of us do. And Lord help us if the internet goes down. Oh, we're in trouble then. Because we're not connected. I'm not connected. And we get really worried about connecting with our people outside. Now some of us now... I'll tell you something, my wife Julie works from home, and we got to have the internet working for her to work from home. But many times we just get frazzled because we're not connected. I want to encourage you, Jesus wants to keep us connected to the Father at all times. He wants to give us what we need at all times. He wants to give us that physical connection we need, but he wants to give us that spiritual connection that we always know he's walking with us. And just like these people are, are, are so numerous, that they crushed Jesus, that they had so much going on, it says he healed many, so that as many as had afflictions pressed about him to touch him, and the unclean spirits, whenever they saw him, fell down before him and cried out, saying, you're the son of God. Now, that's the power of God being displayed in our Savior. And as he displays it, we recognize something. We recognize he's not encouraging us to be spectators. He's encouraging us to participate. Now, I used to watch my daughter Hannah dance. Well, I can truthfully tell you I was a spectator. I've never participated. I used to watch our son Jonathan do karate. And when he was doing his black belt test along the way, 
and they set up like five or six boards around him, and I watch him pop all of those things in, you know, uh, half a second and, and uh, break a concrete block. I was definitely just a spectator. I was not a participant. Even at home, I was afraid of it. We need to get past being spectators. We, we do church. This is worship time. But it's not spectator time. It's participation in the praise and worship of God. It's participation in the learning and, and understanding of his word from the scripture. It is our opportunity to be bound together in fellowship. But he gives us also an encouragement and a commission that we are to therefore go into all nations, among all people, and we're to make disciples. We're to be out there participating in the gospel. Amen? So we want to follow Jesus and be healed so that we can do what? We can show other people how they can be healed too. They can come in to the presence of God. Not just show up on Sunday morning like this, which is awesome, and I love it. But it is participating and doing life together out in the world as people of God, followers, committed followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me share one last thing with you. If we want to be beyond fair weather followers then we follow Jesus when it's inconvenient we follow him in times we need healing but we follow Jesus even when the world works against it last verse I read a moment ago and the unclean spirits the demons whenever they saw him they fell down before Jesus and cried out saying you're the son of God but Jesus sternly warned them that they should not make him known why because they're unclean, they're evil, they're demonic, and he didn't need demons and demonic and evil spirits to make his presence known in the world. He's the Son of God. He didn't need Satan's army to make him known. He was going to be made known by the power of God's Spirit. And the unclean spirits, when they recognized who he was, they bowed down before him. Think about that. They proclaimed him. He quieted them. Why? Because he has authority over all things, his entire universe, right? So he's, he quieted all the demons and all the things they had to say. The world will try to come against God's church, try to come against the spirit of Christ in us, try to come against the ministry that we might do in the world. But understand, Jesus will quiet the demons. Don't worry about the world. What do we know? What has Jesus already told us in John's gospel? He's already overcome the world. So we can trust him in that. But I want to say this, because I think sometimes it's a sad commentary. What does it say to us that often... The demons of the world declare Jesus more than his own people do. Did you hear me? What does it say about us at times when often the demons in the world and the evil in the world declare Jesus more often than we do? Brothers and sisters, we have a calling. A calling to live out in the power of God, in the love of God, in the strength of God. In John 15, verses 12 and 13, some of my all-time favorite verses, this is my commandment. Jesus is saying this to his disciples. This is my commandment that you do what? You love one another as I've loved you. Boy, can you think about that for a moment? How difficult is it to love one another the way Jesus loves us? He loves us unconditionally at all times, even when we're sinners, even when we're at odds with him, even when we're against him, he loves us. Can we love each other in that way? Greater love has no one than this than to lay down one's life for his friends. That's our calling. That's our servanthood. That's who we are, not spectators, but participants in the love in the gospel of Christ to love each other, to love a fallen world, 
and to lay down our life for one another and our friends. That's our calling. What would quiet the demons in our world today, you think? I think it would be the church of Jesus Christ standing up boldly. The church of Jesus Christ praying boldly. The church of Jesus Christ humbly before pleading in prayer for God to bring a revival in his land. For God's people to come desperately seeking not our desires and our wants, but desperately seeking what God wants. People to repent, to turn around and turn back toward him. It can still happen in America. It can still happen in this community. It can still happen all around us. But we've got to be willing to understand that just as James said it in James chapter 2 verse 17, faith without works is dead. If we're going to be real people of faith, not just the spectators and onlookers, but participants in the gospel of Christ, then we're going to be those people that we exercise our faith every day and we begin in God's church and let it flow out into the world. Amen? Yesterday, there was a group of people who met here and there'll be several more opportunities as Vacation Bible School approaches in the end of June. There'll be other work days to prepare. They, there still needs. You know, we're trying to pour ourselves into the next generation of believers, right? And so whether it's Bible school or whether it's children's church that's going on right now, and by the way, Emily Fowler needs your help. I think it would be nice for Emily for her to be able to come into church sometimes and worship. What, don't you think? So if that's the case, we need to recognize that being servants, it starts here. It starts among us in God's house and among God's people. And then it spreads out into the world. And we participate in the gospel. And we recognize their needs in children's ministry and in youth ministry and in music ministry and all the different ministries of the church. And God may be laying upon your heart, your mind, your spirit, a way to help. And you may stand back and say, but Lord, I don't feel comfortable with that. God's not asking you about that. God's asking you to serve. He's asking you not to be a spectator, not to be a fair weather follower, but to be a participant in the love and the power of the Spirit. You hear me? So as God calls us and God uh, prepares us, and he wants us to teach the next generations be behind us, then we want to share, we want to teach, we want to care, we want to reach, and we want to sow seeds and plant those seeds and water those seeds and nurture those seeds to grow. Amen? So that people can come to know Christ, so that children and students and young adults and median adults and senior adults can come to know Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. But we've got to be willing to do one thing. When God calls us to serve him, we've got to be willing to stand up and say yes. Will you say yes and surrender to the Lord who saved you? Will you say yes and submit to him in whatever he asks? And let me tell you something. God will ask you to do things that you cannot do. Did you hear what I just said? He will almost always ask you to do things you cannot do. Why? Because he can do them through you. His spirit will empower you. His spirit will give you the grace and strength. His spirit will say you, and, and I know some of you sitting back and say, there he goes. Preachers, Talking about something I can't do. I just can't be around children. Or I can't be around this. Or I can't do it. How do you know? Unless you're totally submissive and surrender to the Lord. And you say to him eye to eye and face to face in prayer. God do whatever you want to in me. I told you before. At 18 I got called to 
preach my very first sermons, I kept telling the Lord, Lord, I can't do this. I, I am going to shake apart on the stage. I am going to say like 10 words, and then I'm just, I, I'll, I'll have to go sit down. Remember, Lord, I'll embarrass you. So don't ask me to do this. I'm going to tell you something. When you surrender it all and just say, Lord, I know I can't do it. But you can. You will be amazed at the things that will happen in your life. Will you be a participant in the gospel? Don't be that fair weather follower. Put your trust in him fully. And wherever he leads you, be willing to say, yes, I'll go, Lord. Father, in these next few moments, we're going to come and really desire to put ourselves before you and be vulnerable before you as you gave everything for us in your son Jesus. And I'm praying right now that you just take us all that we won't be fair weather followers. But when you speak to our hearts, our minds, our spirits today, wherever you want to lead us, we'll go. You may be leading some to come and join this church at Sandy Valley to serve here today. And if you're leading them, I, I pray, Father, they'll say yes and come. I pray, Father, that as you speak to some, that you're encouraging them to be in new ministry or you're encouraging them to be involved with our children or Vacation Bible School or our youth ministry or whatever it might be that they won't look at you and say no that's too hard that's too inconvenient that's but they'll just look to you and say yes Lord you do it through me and Father I pray for even one here in this room or listening online today who doesn't know for sure that they are a born again believer and a real committed follower of Jesus I pray right now they might be able to turn to you in faith and say, Lord, I want to believe. I just need your assurance and your blessing and your power to help me believe and have faith. I pray, Lord, that as your spirit overwhelms them, they'll be able to confess with their mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in their hearts that you raised him from the dead. And they'll be able to say, Lord, forgive me and accept me as your child and let me come into your family. And Father, you are so ready to do that, I know. If they'll only look to you and say, yes, yes, Lord. Right now, whatever you ask of us, help us follow you. Help us trust you. And we pray all this believing in your power and what you're going to do in Jesus' name. Amen.